this is the last lecture of this module. So, let us complete in the, so today we have two parts, we consolidate uh, all the results uh, we have discussed so far in the last four lectures and in the second part of this particular lecture, uh, we will uh, try to discuss uh, quickly about the non-homogeneous equation. So far we were discussing the homogeneous system, but the, at the end of it we will also discuss the non-homogeneous system today. So, to introduce that we need a concept called, we to consolidate results and write it in the form of theorems, we are going to write now whatever discussed in the form of theorem, we need to have the concept of generalized eigenvectors. So, generalized eigenvector. As you see, our whole trouble is that when there is an eigenvalue which is repeated and you say an eigenvalue is repeated with order m and we may or may not get m eigenvectors. If we get uh, that many number of eigenvectors corresponding to its algebraic multiplicity, then there is no problem we can always diagonalize the matrix and we can write down the solution. So, the problem comes for any particular eigenvalue if its geometric multiplicity is strictly less than the algebraic uh, multiplicity, then there will be a deficiency of uh, eigenvectors to find a basis of R n, so that the matrix can be diagonalized. So, in this scenario we introduce the concept of generalized eigenvector. So, what is called, so let lambda be an eigenvalue, be an eigenvalue with uh, algebraic multiple uh, eigenvalue of eigenvalue of A which is an n by n matrix uh, with uh, algebraic multiplicity m. Okay. So, uh, we call, uh, we say a vector v not equal to 0 is in R n a generalized eigenvector, generalized eigenvector of lambda, rather generalized eigenvector for lambda if a minus lambda i power k of v equal to 0 for some k equal to say uh, 2 to n. Of course, when k equal to 1, it is an eigenvector. So, we in, in a generalized eigenvector, we include uh, even the usual eigenvector. So, for some k this should happen. When it happens for k equal to 1, it is an eigenvector when it happens for higher k, it is called a generalized eigenvector. So, we generalize, we use it for both the normal eigenvectors and more generalized eigenvectors. So, there is some interesting results which you can say for example, we start with an example before going to that. You will not example most of the parts are exercises. Look at this matrix A is equal to 2, 0, 1, 2. So, lambda 1 equal to lambda 2 is the eigenvalue with algebraic multiplicity 2, this algebraic multiplicity 2. So, the exercise is that there exists only one eigenvector, there exists only one eigenvector. and that eigenvector can be chosen to be independent. When I say that one eigenvector means one independent eigenvector. Of course, if you have an eigenvector, every multiple of that is also an eigenvector, but you do not have a thing and can be taken to be say v 1 equal to 0 1. You can prove that. If v is an eigenvector, every eigenvector will be a multiple of that one. Now, prove that that is easy, any vector is a generalized eigenvector, 
prove that any vector v is a generalized Taken vector, generalized Taken vector. This is because you can actually see that because you can see that a minus 2 i whole square is nothing but zero matrix. You see once it is a zero matrix for every vector it satisfies. So, you can therefore, one can choose v 2 is equal to 1 0 as another as an generalized Eigen vector independent of v 1 you see independent of v 1. So, you got a basis consisting of generalized Eigen vectors and this is the theme we are use it. So, I will give one more exercise here here it is a let me write it is a similar thing solve the problem solve the problem in solve the initial value problem with a is equal to uh, 1 0 0 1 minus 1 may be 2 0 1 1 2 it is the same thing. So, in fact, we, we are going to write this uh, of course, this pro exercise is valid after the description this you can write it as of the form s, s plus n we are going to say that what is s and what is the. So, you have to complete the problem I will recall this problem again as an exercise later. So, there is an interesting lemma can be proved which is trivial uh, which is not difficult. So, I will skip it I will not prove it here we do not have that kind of time that much of time let E be a generalized Eigen space a gen Eigen generalized Eigen space means an Eigen space corresponding to generalized Eigen vectors of a particular lemma be a generalized Eigen space. Just like it is an Eigen space an Eigen space is the uh, space spanned by the all the Eigen vectors corresponding to a particular uh, Eigen value general Eigen space of A then the, this is already we are discussed corresponding to to an Eigen value Eigen value lambda then E is invariant under A E is invariant under A that is is a quickly you can prove it that is a of e contained in e see a will act on the elements. So, whenever you have something uh, if you take any point in e it will remain there. So, this kind of things which you know about the Eigen space will also work for generalized Eigen way. So, I will not prove the results here because I will not have time to prove it. So, because we want to complete something with this we also yesterday wrote that every r n can be decomposed into stable unstable and all that which are invariant subspaces under the flow not under a the flow is e power t a. So, the spaces e s e u and e c which are invariant under the flow e power t a that is what we have discussed yesterday. So, we will now let me complete uh, all the theorems. Uh, but this is whatever I am writing is essentially we have discussed in the uh, in in detail 2 by 2 in more detail and so let me complete for the sake of uh, let me write down in the for the sake of completeness. So, I will do first I will write so in the form of theorem. So, I will write three theorems the first two theorem are special cases of actually the second uh, uh, final theorem. So, it is a special case theorem 1. Suppose A has only real Eigen value I am not talking about it is a simplicity it can have multiple Eigen values, but I am saying that assume A has A has only real Eigen values Eigen values lambda 1 etcetera lambda n lambda 1 etcetera lambda n according to its multiplicity. So, uh, uh, lambda 1 can be lambda 2 
equal to lambda 3 if there is a multiplicity according to its multiplicity taken according to its multiplicity. Then the result what we have discussed so far of course, which requires a proof we did not prove it everything which is nothing but the part of uh, Jordan decomposition. Then there exists a basis V 1 etcetera V n of generalized eigenvectors that is it generalized eigenvectors of gen of R n that means a basis consisting of consisting of generalized eigenvectors of R n and uh, so, you, you take the so each v 1 is a vector put that vector as a column vector. So, v 1 so this is the first column v 2 is the second column etcetera v n which is a matrix and it is a matrix formed by the independent vectors it will be invertible is invertible. So, you have a basis of generalized taken vectors and a has the form that is what we are so far discussing the given matrix will not be diagonalizable. If you want to have diagonalizable you need a basis consisting of eigenvectors, but what we are getting is a basis consisting of generalized eigenvectors. So, what it says that you can decompose A into two matrices in which S is diagonalizable and N is nilpotent. So, you see, so you have the problem of computing E power A, but every matrix can be written as a sum of two matrices one S which is diagonalizable and for uh, once it is diagonalizable you can compute it and N is nilpotent and again computing E power N is easy uh, and not only uh, S plus N is nilable with. So, it is diagonalizable means with this diagonal matrix. So, it is diagonal you see you have diagonal lambda 1 etcetera lambda n more the and is not only that s and n commute that is very important n s n nilpotent. So, you have all the properties nilpotent and hence uh, you can compute e power a therefore, e power a T a is nothing but e power T s into e power T n. <coughs> so, you can compute this one and T s can be T s is of the form p inverse of a. So, you can write down this is p inverse of <coughs> diagonal of e power T lambda j. So, diagonal p and e power T n is n will be a nilpotent of order some k order k. So, in that case you will have e power T n will be of the form this we computed yesterday T power n etcetera T power k minus 1 by k minus 1 factorial in the end. So, you see n power k minus 1 of course. So, if you want to find a solution so, solution is x t is equal to e power t a of x naught. So, you see you have the complete solution you can directly write down using this one. If this is a matrix it is x on x naught you get that one. So, you have to compute that one. So, this is the case when a has only real eigenvalue. You can also write a theorem to suppose assume a has a assume a is of order 2 n by 2 n instead of n I am taking even order that is all to assume that because complex roots occur in pairs. So, if I want to assume that a has only complex eigen values it order has to be even and has complex eigen values has all complex eigen values. So, it is uh, this need not be the case. I told you as this is a special case complex eigenvalues lambda j is of the form 
a j plus i b j lambda j bar is equal to a j minus i b j complex second value b j not equal to 0. Okay. Then there exists generalized eigenvectors, complex generalized eigenvectors, complex vectors w 1 j is equal to u j plus i v j w j bar is equal to u j minus i v j okay this is that one so that if you write down you can write in the, uh, the uh, order means v 1 u 1 v 2 u 2 you write that way real and complex parts complex and real part v n u n is a basis of r 2 n. So, we are working with 2 n is a basis of r 2 n. So, write your matrix p is this matrix p p is a column now p v 1 v 1 these are all column vectors in r n v n u n. So, it is a 2 n by 2 n thing is invertible again further you have the same representation the only thing is that it is a complex further you have a is equal to s plus n s is diagonalizable that means p inverse of s p is equal to you get diagonal of diagonal of uh, lambda 1 uh, so, it is a, it's a diagonal uh, yeah is diagonal. So, let me write is diagonal of course, diagonal entries with lambda 1 lambda 1 bar lambda 2 lambda 2 bar etcetera is diagonal n nil potent Uh, yeah, there is uh, something uh, something to be something is wrong, not exactly what I said. It is diagonal, is block diagonal. It is block diagonal. What is the meaning of block diagonal? I am telling this is of the form you will have diagonal of each block, uh, block will have 2 by 2 entry a j minus p j b j a j sorry. So, that is the block diagonal. So, that is the correct way of writing p inverse of s t is block diagonal. So, the first in d which we have seen yesterday. So, the first entry is uh, first block 2 by 2 and then 2 by 2 then 2 by 2 like that along the diagonal. So, it is 2 by n and n nil potent of course, of some order nil potent. So, yeah, that is it. S n equal to S n s this always you need it to commute then only you can compute. So, you can uh, again write and we can write the solution as again you see we can write the solution as complete solution as x t is equal to p diagonal because you can compute the e power of this one easily that is nothing but e power this we have already done for each one cos b j t minus sin b j t sin b j t cos b j t this is the diagonal entry this is the e power of that one into p and then you will have your e power t n e power t n is nothing but i plus t n plus etcetera t power k minus 1 n power k minus 1 by k minus 1 factorial of x naught. So, you have the complete solution. So, you see of course, this involves uh, the interesting point to be remarked here is that uh, to write down the solution 
even though this is diagonalization this block diagonalization is done why are the uh, finding the uh, generalized eigen vectors at the end you do not need the generalized eigen vectors to be computed to write down the solution it is enough to find uh, the eigen vectors all the eigen vectors and its order algebraic model you do not need anything for that. So, you are if this is the situation you do not need to find the generalized taken vector in these special cases you see that is the interesting point. So, now we will write the last uh, part of it before going to the knowledge thing. So, the general case general case which you are already seen this is nothing but your Jordan canonical form which we have already written yesterday today we have written the special cases separately that is all. What it says that so you start with I do not write it in the form. So, this is a theorem again you can write it if you want it in the form of the theorem. Let a be of order to separate of order k plus 2 a. Now, this does not general reduce any generality this is just to separate your real eigen values and complex eigen value. Here I am going to assume that uh, it is lambda 1 etcetera uh, lambda k real eigen value. So, you can have any number any n uh, any n you can decompose in the form k plus 2 n real eigen values lambda k plus j is something like uh, or lambda j itself you can write it lambda j equal to a j plus i b j lambda j bar is equal to a j minus i b j b j not equal to 0 is a complex eigen value and j runs from k plus 1 to k plus n. So, you see so you have all the eigen values and then there exists basis that is all it is there exists basis we do not write it of generalized eigen vectors generalized eigen vectors you see you can write your complete theorem and you can write down your p. So, you will have p you write your p as the matrix. So, you have the first k eigen vectors generalized eigen vectors corresponding to uh, k this is not here corresponding to the real eigen values. So, this v 1 to v k is the eigen vectors generalized eigen vectors corresponding to lambda 1 to lambda k and then v 1 u 1 v k plus 1 u k plus 1 like that to v k plus n u k plus n is the are the eigen vectors generalized eigen vectors corresponding to the complex eigen values and this matrix is invertible. So, you considering what the most general case and a and with this p you cannot diagonalize you can uh, you can write down the diagonal with the blocks. Now, you will have the problem earlier you had a very particular format in the uh, specific cases, but you will have diagonal of b 1 etcetera for some r we do not know that are all depend on its multiplicity and algebraic multiplicity geometric multiplicity, various factors where each b i is a block where each b i is a block block may be can be a 1 by 1 block also. So, if you have only one simple eigen value with one vector it will be a single one lambda it will come and it takes one specific form and takes the form that is a thing and takes the form and this we have computed already yesterday we have elaborate way computed and any b i j will be of the form lambda lambda etcetera lambda and the upper diagonal elements 1 etcetera 1 the rest of the elements are 0 and the order again depends on the multiplicity. There are some estimates for that we will not discuss here, but any typical b j will look like this particular form and the order of b j may vary depending on the lambda j's. 
this is for the case if lambda real or it can have the block or so it can have the block b j will be of the form uh, of the form again we have discussed how to compute the one this will be d i 2 d on the diagonal i 2 here d i 2 these are all 2 by 2 matrices inside where d is equal to of the form d will be of the form a minus b b a for if if lambda is equal to a plus i b b not equal to 0 and i 2 will be of the form is the identity matrix 2 by 2 identity. So, this is the typical eigenvalue. So, using this this will immediately write down your solution as x t because so you have decoupled the system a x equal to x dot equal to a x it is enough to solve the system for y dot is equal to b j of y for each b j you solve it separately and each b j will have one of either this form or this form. So, with that you can immediately write your solution x of t is equal to so let me finish in this page itself you will have p since this is of the diagonal form even for the block the diagonal form works ok. So, it will be of the form diagonal e power t b j d b 1 etcetera e power t b r at the uh, at p inverse p inverse of x naught. So, you see so you have your complete solution. So, you have that so and you how to compute each t power b j each t power b j is a matrix set matrix which is the same order as the b j and how to compute e power t j is what we had discussed yesterday. So, your this gives you the complete analysis of the uh, Jordan composite and representation of the solution for the linear system. So, with this uh, we now move on to the last uh, section of this talk namely for the non homogeneous system. So, we will move on to the next section non homogeneous equation homogeneous again autonomous we are in autonomous only because all these facilities are available. No. So, what would be your equation? you have your equation x dot t is equal to a which is independent of t. So, x t plus g t where a the elements g t. So, you can have your g t and your initial condition x at t naught is equal to x naught ok. So, we are going to uh, introduce a concept to concepts called fundamental matrix and transition matrix. This is crucial even in understanding I mean you can write down the solution in a much without introducing these notions which I am going to describe soon, but that is the thing uh, is used to understand non autonomous systems because this represents. So, we are going to represent the solution of this system in a using the fundamental matrices which can be generalized to, to the non autonomous system. So, let me introduce this notation which is crucial fundamental matrix and transition matrix. So, let me solve the, this is system is the system 2 let me call it and we call it uh, uh, the same notation I am using, I am not using in a different notation. I am using this notation a for even for the homogeneous system. So, this let me call it 1, this is my 1 and uh, uh, so let uh, so I want to solve this equation with x at 0 is equal to say x naught. 
I can solve for various initial condition. So, choose x naught equal to the basis vector E n yeah. where E 1 to E n canonical basis canonical that is 1 0 except of basis of R. So, for each of these initial condition I will have a solution and let phi i t be the solution of 2 be the solution solution of 2 solution of 1 I am talking about the homogeneous equation that I that means phi i t satisfy the equation 1 with that is uh, uh, that is uh, phi i t at 0 will satisfy the equation E i that is all. So, phi i t phi i dot is equal to a phi i and uh, phi i 0 is equal to E i. So, with this I can introduce phi i phi t a matrix because phi i t is a vector it is a vector solution. So, each vector I will put it in the first component phi 1 t etcetera phi n t. You know that these are all independent solutions and invertibility now you can uh, think uh, you can immediately understand this equation. And what is this phi t will uh, satisfy? So, phi t will satisfy each phi i t will satisfy an equation with 1 0 0 as the initial condition phi t will satisfy with the initial condition 0 0 etcetera. So, phi t which is a matrix which is a matrix and satisfy the matrix differential equation satisfy the matrix differential equation max differential equation phi t phi dot of t phi is a matrix now. So, you can still that one it. So, you are arranging phi uh, your each row properly and what is your phi at 0 phi at 0 is nothing but identity because phi t, phi i at phi at 0 is 1 0 0 etcetera phi t at 0 is equal to 0 1 0 etcetera it will satisfy the matrix differential equation okay so you can do it instead of the initial condition i can do the initial condition we can uh, one can take the initial condition initial condition at t naught. So, but by the way what is the solution of phi i t? Phi i t is nothing but e power t a e a right e, e a is the basis the other e is the yeah, that is it that is not a problem and what is your phi t? your phi t is nothing but arranged in columns it is nothing but your flow you see. So, phi t is not in this particular case. So, I can take your phi t t naught. So, I introduce phi at t t naught is nothing but phi at these are all very special case works for the uh, autonomous system this is nothing but e power t minus t naught of a and this will again uh, keep uh, so this phi t t naught again will satisfy your matrix differential equation but with the initial condition at t naught that is all the difference we just translated satisfy the matrix differential equation matrix differential equation. Uh, d by d t let, uh, to avoid that t naught also there which we are going to vary phi t t naught. So, the, nothing but a of phi t t naught t naught is fixed t is varying with the initial condition at t naught phi t naught t naught is identity you see that is the thing. 
So, you have your solution essentially I am translating a T you know, so you can write down. This is called the transition matrix. The matrix definition phi, phi the matrix phi T T known is called the transition matrix because his the name is suits transition. This is where what is it is happening is that it takes the point it takes the point at t naught. If the point a position is at t naught is at x naught, it takes to phi t t naught of x naught at time t. Okay. So, that is what happening. So, phi t t naught of x naught is equal to you look at that phi t t naught of x naught is equal to x naught and then at time t the solution will be at so x at t is equal to phi t t naught of x naught. So, you take the trajectory. So, if you have the trajectory at the initial point this takes to the trajectory translate. So, the phi t t naught takes the trajectory from x naught to x t at time t. So, the name is correct the transition matrix is correct. Okay. This also have the other uh, properties which we may probably tell uh, a little later we will uh, we will try to say something later at the end of it. So, there is also a notion of fundamental matrix. Okay. Fundamental matrix. It is more or less like a transition matrix, but we do not put a condition on the initial value. So, any matrix, any matrix, matrix C of t that means consisting of functions. So, the entries of side t are uh, functions, matrix satisfying the matrix differential equation satisfying the matrix differential equation uh, psi dot of t is equal to a psi t is called a fundamental matrix. So, the trivial fundamental matrices are transition matrices. So, you see. So, every transition matrix is a fundamental matrix. Every transition matrix is a fundamental matrix. So, Okay. And uh, uh, trans fundamental matrix in this particular situation is of the form e power t minus t naught into a that is uh, your thing uh, every transition. But there is also a another interesting thing which you can easily prove suppose c is invertible there is no suppose c is a constant matrix which is c is an invert is is an invertible of course, constant matrix invertible constant matrix then psi t you define psi t as phi t you post multiply c then consider this one consider psi t. So, this implies psi dot of t with respect to t phi t means phi t t naught if you want to do that one. So, I uh, suppressed t naught here psi dot t is equal to phi dot of t and c is independent of t, but phi dot of t is nothing but a phi t and c and this is a uh, associative law is true. So, substitute phi t 
that you will get A s i t. That means, if you take uh, any invertible matrix C and uh, then define phi t is equal to uh, psi t is equal to phi t c, then is also that imply psi t is uh, a fundamental matrix. Fundamental matrix. Okay. But the interesting result, which is trivial to prove, so I will leave it as an exercise. Every fundamental matrix is of this form. Every fund every fundamental matrix given any fundamental matrix given any fundamental matrix matrix C uh, say there exists an invertible matrix matrix C such that C t is of the form phi t into C. In fact, if you observe, you can compute C for given phi given C, you can come given psi, you can compute C. In fact, psi t naught is equal to phi t naught psi, but phi t phi t naught is nothing but phi t t naught. I told you already the other one is suppressed phi t t naught c okay. is the initial value phi t i represented for phi t t naught suppressed, but phi t t naught is identity. So, this is nothing but c. So, your c has to be of the form psi t naught. So, you have that this is a trivial exercise with this you can compute and do that one psi is of the form that one you just you need the uniqueness of the solution that is all. Now, with this we will go to the non homogeneous equation. I use this notation as I said you do not need all this, but it is introduced to understand the non autonomous system which we may not do that one. So, now non homogeneous system we apply the variation of parameters which we have done in first and second order equation we up you uh, variation of parameters variation of parameters. Okay. So, note that if you see, so I use this notation phi. Uh, so, let me work with that initial condition t equal to 0 that is enough you can work with any t naught also. So, uh, choose t naught equal to 0. So, to avoid, but you can it does not matter there is no loss of generality. Okay, no loss of generality. Only you have to work uh, thing. So note that uh, phi t is equal to e power t a of x naught for v satisfy the homogeneous equation satisfy the homogeneous equation. This is the same idea we have used I am mean, uh, homogeneous equation with uh, phi at 0 is equal to v. So, the idea which we have used in variation of parameters if you take your flow e t a and act on any constant vector v it will only satisfy the homogeneous equation. So, you can never expect to have a solution e power t a v for a non homogeneous equation. So, the idea which we have used is to vary v idea is to vary v and view it as a function of t view it as a function of t that may give you a hope because if you do not do that one you are never going to get a homogeneous non homogeneous solution this might give. So, assume phi t uh, assume x t is e power t a into v t is a solution of non homogeneous equation solution of x dot of t 
is equal to a x t plus g t. Now, let us compute here compute if you compute x dot of t. So, it is a product formula once you apply the differentiation to the first term you get a here a e power t a v t and if you apply that to uh, there you get e power t a into v dot of t. This is nothing but your e power t a into v t is nothing but your x t plus e power t a into v dot of t. So, if you want x dot is t is a solution to this uh, homoge non homogeneous equation 2. So, if x t is a solution to 2 will immediately imply we need to choose to choose the this term is g t we need to choose e power t a v dot of t is equal to g t or otherwise you have the first order equation for v t this is an integral calculus problem you don't have nothing to do it it is a e power t a into g t. So, you just integrate that will give you your v t at v at 0 v at 0 is equal to uh, what do I get it v at you want uh, x naught you uh, want this to be at 0 you want that to be 0. Yeah, v at t naught. B yeah. Yeah, v at t naught. If you integrate t naught, if you do that one, plus integral t naught to t of course, you can work with t equal to 0 or not you integrate that one e power minus s a into g of s t s this is what you want to do. So, you get that. So, now you substitute this formula you substitute v t in where do you substitute you substitute here. So, if you get if you substitute v t there what you will get is a substitute what you get your x of t will be. So, e power so you can do a, my, a small computation which I will skip here t minus t naught of a at x naught. Of course, when you choose t equal to t naught it will be just x naught do the computation substitute and do the computation you get plus integral e power t naught to t e power t minus s this is a just a small computation absolutely no difficulty g of s t s. So, you have that formula. So, this is your formula for your solution the using the variation of parameters you see. So, when there is no g when there is no g this term would not be there and you know that this is the solution to your homogeneous equation. So, the first one is exactly getting what you have seen homogeneous equation you have a complement if you uh, recall your second order equation you have a complementary function which is a solution to your homogeneous equation we have seen that and then you have a kind of particular integral and that is what we have done. <laughs> so, let me write it in this form. So, this is of the form v t this is nothing but phi of t minus t naught x naught and symbol form plus integral t naught to t phi of t minus s g of s t s. This kind of representations are impo very very important in applications. For example, the non homogeneous term uh, will appear in the control form. So, plenty of applications 
which you know plenty of applications. For example, uh, GT may be a control, GT may act as a control, control. So, uh, and it may say for example, linear control, say linear control. We will not get into that one of the form. This is a G T is equal to some B of U T. You see, so you have that control form, uh, that format. Okay. So we will not do that one, but it gives you a, a, a important thing. And another thing, interesting thing is that here you can also define this kind of solutions in the weak form and other kinds of thing in ODE it is called the mild form and which is also important in control theory because you do not look for controls which are continuous and when you do not have the continuity this kind of weaker formulations of the representation of the solutions uh, you can write it as thing. So, we will not get into that, but what we have seen is that you can write down your solution consisting of two parts. One part is the solution corresponding to your homogeneous system and in the last four and uh, lectures we were actually studying the homogeneous system completely. You are trying to understand this phi t minus t naught of x naught completely according to the various form how to compute that one. Once you compute you also have a second term that corresponds to the non homogeneous part. With this we more or less end our thing, but we make a slide or a just one uh, uh, or two comments about the non autonomous system and we will stop here non autonomous system. You know that non autonomous system works completely different even in the second order you have seen that one when you have a equation with a constant coefficients in the second order equation linear constant coefficient equation you have a complete analysis how to represent the solution. But when you have an equation x double dot plus p t x t plus q t uh, uh, x dot and q t x, x t equal to 0 or uh, y t or g t then you have no there are some methods, but in general finding two independent solutions is difficult. You have a solution structure and here also we are going to give you a representation what you have seen in even in the n by n system you have a complete knowledge of the homogeneous system in terms of the exponential that exponential representation is not possible. So, you have you have a solution here of this form x dot t. So, the variation of parameters with the non homogeneous is fine, but even with a t x t. So, we are not going to do much on this x t naught is equal to x. But what I want to or the homogeneous counterpart there will be a g t there. But the interesting point is that existence and uniqueness available, existence and uniqueness available by the same general theory which you are studied in our earlier module. So, the uh, if of course, the elements in x and the component elements in a t are continuous that minimum assumption of the continuity of the matrix a t is required, but existence and uniqueness available from the general theory from the general theory. Now, the concept of fundamental matrix and transition matrix can be introduced that is important thing concept of you do not have no e power t a and finding a solution at t naught you cannot transfer so that is also an important thing you can uh, it is not possible you find the solution at x equal to 0 and then translate it because of the non autonomous system which you will see in more elaborate way in, uh, in non linear analysis. You cannot just translate uh, uh, find the solution at t naught equal to 0 and then translate like phi t minus t naught and that is not available in this case. So, you have to study if you want to understand at t naught or to study directly at t naught 
the facility of this kind of translations are not available which you will see in nonlinear analysis. But the concept of fundamental and transition matrix can be introduced that is the whole thing transition matrix can be matrices can be introduced can be introduced that is the important thing introduced. So, now you have to introduce so let phi now phi this is important now you have to write separately you cannot write this is of the form phi t minus t naught that is not the thing. So, t naught and it works differently be the transition matrix transition matrix transition matrix of 1 means it satisfies this uh, uh, matrix differential equation satisfies uh, satisfies the uh, 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 satisfies phi dot that is d by d t this is a matrix phi dot at t t no is equal to a t phi t t no and x at t not is equal to identity this can be introduced the thing and you can also introduce the fundamental matrix fundamental matrix z what is the mean this is a matrix i t which satisfies the differential equation and you have the same formula you can also write your uh, z t will be the form z t has the form all that results are true here z t has the form uh, uh, psi t is equal to phi t c phi t c you can do all that and uh, your solution will be all that can be introduced exactly this way but never write phi t t naught is equal to phi of t minus t naught equal to e power t minus t naught into a and that portion is not available to you the rest of the system you can introduce by using the uniqueness phi i t and then put it as a column wise and you can introduce everything phi t t naught form and you can write down here and your solution also can be written as x t you may think that it is solved, but it is nothing is solved actually we are only saying that phi t t naught is a solution of this matrix differential equation or phi i t each row column is a solution of your differential equation with a uh, thing, but how to solve that differential equation and how to find that is not given to you. In the earlier case you have a representation of e power t. So, you have your phi of t t naught of x naught you see. So, you have your solution that is all you can do it for the homogeneous equation and uh, uh, the uh, so, this is called the transition matrix and for the homogeneous non homogeneous system non homogeneous system you have your solution x t is of the form phi of t you have the component y all this can be a thing x naught plus integral t naught to t phi of t t naught you have to write this way not phi t t no of uh, phi inverse of I think uh, this probably may be uh, yes if I th this may be yes there may be some s yes, phi inverse of no this is t not only here s t not g s d f. So, you have a representation of that form ok. So, you have the thing. So, the last thing phi has the group structure phi has the last slide 
is as the group structure because this is due to the invertibility of the irreversibility of your system. When you know the solution at T naught, you can also solve this for the past. But then there are when you go to PDEs and other things, uh, you may not be able to do it and you will only get a semi group structure. So, what are the, phase, the thing? You have phi T naught T naught. This property is identity that you have it and the other interesting property, this is the crucial property phi T s and phi s T naught is nothing but phi of T T naught. This is the most crucial property of the semi group structure. So, it means that your solution is going from s to T and s to T naught and so, you have if you want to go from T naught to, to T, first you go from solution T naught to S and then you can take an initial condition at S and then go to T. So, that means you can go from X T naught at time T naught here, you reach the time T S here and then you go there. Instead of you can go directly here, that is what it says, this semi group property cells. So, this immediately tells you that this is invertible, the implication is that phi T s, if I put uh, phi T naught, in particular if I put s equal to T, I get uh, oh, s itself and if I put s is equal to T, I will get phi T T, phi T or maybe I have to do it some T naught properly and you get identity. So, that you will get it as inverse of phi T s is equal to phi s t. You can prove all that. It is the same thing. If you, like, if you want to see that term, s is equal to T naught identity. Uh, yeah, I think uh, that is correct. So, we will uh, skip this. So, you have uh, all that property. So, as far as uh, the uh, non autonomous system is concerned, you have all the representation of the solution using transition matrix, but uh, there is no way in general to determine uh, transition matrix as in the uh, non autonomous system. But then there are some conditions under which uh, this transition matrix can be computed in some form of the exponential using certain commutativity of that one. So, with this we will complete the module on linear systems and you will use, you see the use of this uh, thing in the uh, when you we study the uh, nonlinear systems and the stability analysis. Thank you.